Hello everyone, this is Ashwini from Chinta.com. Today, we will learn about calculus. In fact, we will learn about this particular topic called Sandwich Theorem and use it to prove one of the most interesting limit problems, which is limit x tends to 0, sin x over x. Now, if you are new to calculus, do not worry, I'll explain every bit of it. Calculus is extremely important if you are taking the Physics Olympiad program at Chinta or if you are taking ISI CMI entrance program at Chinta. I'll explain everything and I'll also give you a challenge problem. If you can solve it, please put the correct answer in the comment section. Best commenter is usually awarded every month. Okay, so Let's look at this particular quantity, limit x tends to 0, limit sin x over x. We want to understand it geometrically. So to do that, let's draw a unit circle. Unit circle means the radius is 1. Let's mark the center of the circle, mark the a point on the circumference, let's say A. And let's suppose AOB A, o, is the angle X. Angle AOB is equal to X. This is usually in radians. Now what you would want to do is to find out sine of X. So what is sine of x? Sine of x is just the length BM. If this angle is x, the sine of x is sine of x is BM. There are multiple ways of thinking about this. If you are familiar with this fact that sine of x is opposite by hypotenuse, opposite is BM, and the hypotenuse is OB. This is the hypotenuse. But OB is equal to 1, right? Because the radius is 1, and OB is the radius. So it's BM over 1, or just BM. That's why I say sine of x is BM. Sine of x is BM, and x is the angle. Now, with this in mind, let us figure out a way to calculate sine x over x. So to do that, we will need to understand a bit more about the unit circle. What we will do is we will draw a perpendicular, a tangent line that is, from the point A, and extend OB to meet that tangent line at T. Okay, so I don't know if you know about tan of x, tan of an angle, is just simply sine of x over cosine of x. We already know that sine of x is bm, which is this side, and cosine of x, you can check, is om, this side. OM. In fact, this is a very important diagram that you should remember or you should think about. Um, BM is the sine of x, the vertical, and OM is the cosine of x, the horizontal. Now, why is cosine of x OM? Because we know that cosine is adjacent by hypotenuse. Adjacent is again OM, and hypotenuse is again 1 om by 1, so it's om. Remember, we are always working in this unit circle. But notice that bm over om is ta over oa, isn't it? It's ta over oa. This is equal to ta over oa. Why? Because these two triangles are similar. This triangle and this triangle. So, BM over OM is equal to TA over OA, right? 
but OA is equal to 1. So this is just equal to TA. In fact, what we just showed is tan X is just equal to TA, this length. And this is a very, very important diagram that you should keep in your mind. Tan of an angle is just this tangent line. Sine of an angle is this one. And cosine of an angle is this one. That's all. Right? Okay. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and produce an inequality. What inequality? Well, let's join AB. And we have three pieces of area. Let's see what we have. So we have triangle OBA. This is OBA, this triangle. We have the sector OBA. This is the sector OBA. This is sector. And we have the triangle OTA. Triangle OTA. OBA is less than the sector OBA is less than OTA. You can easily see that because OBA is contained in the sector OBA, right? Sector of the circle OBA. And that is again contained in OTA, the triangle OTA. So, of course, triangle OBA will be the smallest one. Then we have the sector OTA. And then we have the triangle OTA. Awesome. So, what is the area of triangle OBA? Well, it's half base into height. So, base is 1 and height is sine of x. We know that BM is sine of x. We just found it out. So, this is half sine of x into 1. That is what triangle OBA is. Sector OBA, you know the sector area formula is half into angle into radius. Again, radius is 1. Half into angle into radius. That's the area of sector OBA. And what is the area of triangle OTA? Well, it's half into height is TA, which is the um, tangent of X. And the radius is OA, which is 1. So we have this inequality in place now. We're almost done. Let's try to write down this carefully. So we have sine of x over 2 divided by x over 2 divided by tan of x over 2. Cancel of the 2's. So we have this. So now notice, this is very important, that since x is positive, we will just consider positive x for the moment. We will stay above the line OA in the clock, a counterclockwise direction. Since x is positive or sine x is positive, we can divide all along by sine x and the inequality will remain the same. So what we'll get is sine x over sine x less than x over sine x less than tan x over sine x. So what we get is 1 is less than x over sine x is less than 1 over cos x. Now if you flip it, what you will get is 1 is greater than sine x over x is greater than cosine of x. Okay, so now we are ready to use the sandwich theorem. What is the sandwich theorem? That if a sequence or an expression is sandwiched between two quantities, and if those two quantities go to the same value, then the stuff in the middle will also go to the same value. So, if you think about the number 1, and you think about it as a sequence, so it's not 1, it's a sequence of numbers 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. A sequence of numbers. What is the limit of this sequence? So, what is the meaning of limit? It's a mysterious number. Let's call this mysterious number M. 
to which the number one can be brought arbitrarily close. So this is the sequence elements A1, A2, A3, and so on, A4, A5. We want to we want to find out a number m such that a n that is any term of the sequence minus m can be made smaller than any value any value so you can bring the sequence term as close to m as you want you don't want to actually you know you don't need to bring a n e to be equal to m that's not needed what's needed is this is one conceptual point you want to bring you want to be able to bring the sequence term as close to m as you want the only freedom that you have is that you can move far away in the sequence to achieve that far away in the sequence so in this case the answer is very simple m is just one if you just have m equal to 1, then a n minus m is smaller than any value because any positive value in any positive value because a n minus m is just 0 and 0 is smaller than all positive quantities. So the limit is m, that mysterious number to which you can get arbitrarily close is 1. The situation for the right hand side, which is cosine of x, is a little bit more interesting. There are actually two sequences involved. So you are actually studying two sequences. One sequence is of x and the other sequence is of cosine of x. Now what you want to do is you want to find again a magic number m such that cosine of x minus m can be made arbitrarily small, can be made as small as you please. What does as small as you please mean? It means that it can be made smaller than any positive number that you want. Now, how can you do that? What is your instrument of doing that? Well, by making x minus 0 as small as needed. So this is like a game. This number, as small as you please, this number is sometimes denoted by epsilon and this number is sometimes denoted by delta. What we say is, we say that cosine of x minus m, m is that mysterious number which we call the limit. Cosine of x minus m, we want to make it smaller than let's say 0 0.02. That's our epsilon. Question is, can we do it? You will say, yes, of course. Maybe if you make x minus 0 smaller than some number, let's say 0 0.005. If you make x, the difference of x and 0, smaller than 0 .005, 0 0.005, then you will be able to achieve, this is if part, then you will be able to achieve cos x minus m less than 0 0.002. Of course, we have to fix m, figure out m. So, you'll see that m is actually equal to 1. Cosine of x and 1, these, these, these two numbers, get very close when you make x and 0 as small as you want. So, one way to see it is like this. If you look at a unit circle, let's say this is O and this is A and this is B. So the angle is X 
and you know that the cosine of x is om, right? I have talked about this a moment ago. So, as you reduce x, that is, as you reduce x means that as you make the difference between x and 0 smaller as you reduce x, what's happening is this om, this om, this distance gets closer to the length of the radius, which is 1. So, cosine of x, which is this much, it's, get, it's getting closer to the length of the radius, which is 1. So, you can make this cosine of x as close to 1 as you want by making x, the angle, sufficiently small. Therefore, we say 1 is the limit of cosine of x as x goes to 0. That's the concept of limit. I have discussed limits and derivatives in other videos in this channel, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview of how you should be thinking about limits. Okay, so now coming back to this, we, we what we see is, we see that cosine of x, the limit is 1, and the left-hand side, 1's limit is of course 1. So you remember you're thinking about this number 1 as not a single number, but a sequence right, which is converging to 1 in this case. So, the left-hand side goes to 1, the right-hand side goes to 1. So, what the sandwich theorem says is that the middle quantity, it is sandwiched, it's always between the top number and the bottom number, it's also going to 1. So, that's what we essentially proved is limit x goes to 0, sine x over x is equal to 1 using the sandwich trick. One similar limit problem that you always do is this one. Limit x tends to 0, ln of 1 plus x over x. This is also a very popular limit. Can you find a sandwich result and put it in the chat or in the comment section? show that ln of 1 plus x by x is between two quantities. So, you have to find these two quantities such that this one goes to 1 and this one also goes to 1. So, by sandwiching, we can say the middle one goes to 1. Then you give it a try. If you can, put in the comment section. I'll check that out. Thank you for watching this video. Keep on doing good mathematics. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.